Hi everybody, thank you for joining us for the Taste of Downtown Holiday Edition. My name is Andrew from Made by Millworks. I'm being joined by Ra Abbas, so you all can meet the maker. Ra is a talented poet, a publisher, and she runs a local apparel and accessory company. Hi Ra. Hi. So since we're meeting the maker, we're just gonna talk to her. <laughs> How'd you get your start? Uh, well, I have two different companies out here for Long Beach. Um, one is a publishing company and one is an apparel company. And uh, the publishing company started when I wrote a book of poetry and pitched it out to places and just didn't like the terms. Um, I think when you're a small a s independent writer and you're doing local events and you want to have some control over the types of places your work goes or um, the types of editing that is required within the work. Um, really, I mean, you're kind of short on options when it comes to the big presses. <laughs> so um, I started my own and uh, I'm a blogger. So uh, a lot of the people in my immediate world are amazing writers and that kind of kickstarted this collection of books. The apparel company um, was a little bit more simple than that. I, I wanted a shirt. <laughs> so, I live on Retro Row and I like uh, I like that angle of Long Beach. I like made with its, you know, eclectic colors and, uh, and kind of like this timelessness, you know? I, I love the timelessness of Long Beach and I didn't see a Long Beach brand that really captured that aspect. Uh, I definitely saw, you know, an athletic and a college aspect and all those things are hugely part of what Long Beach is and, uh, and beautiful, but I, I really wanted the you could have just bought this off a of vintage rack in Retro Row. And so um, I, I partnered uh, with my friends, who's a very talented graphic designer, and sketched things out for them. And uh, he somehow made it into shirts, <laughs> like magic. And, uh, and then I did, I did the rest. So yeah, that's how they began. Uh, do you have any advice for anyone else that wants to get something like this started, whether it's directly related or not? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's just kind of start. There's a quote by Arthur Ashe that I love. It's, uh, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. I think a lot of times we compare ourselves to larger industries and we think like, there's no way I have that capacity. Uh, for instance, when the apparel company started, I was recovering from a series of mini strokes. I mean, when y'all met me, I had my cane and yeah. uh, many times came in, you know, hospital bandaged and things. And you know, you have limited capacity. And so you just work with that and you work with people who are willing to work with that. You know, finding a good team is so critical both not just like your executive team, but the companies you work with, you know, the retail shops, the um, events you agree to go to, all those types of things. When you um, consider yourselves all a part of a team, I, I think it's just really, it's much easier for small businesses to get that leg up. Great, that's wonderful advice. I and mean, we have made or definitely think of ourselves as a team here, but also everyone we work with as well. Um, so, this is just kind of nitty gritty, but on a typical week, about how many hours are you spending on your businesses? Or your poetry, since that's part of your business as well. <laughs> that's true. Um, I spend about 20 to 30 hours a week, and um, and that's mostly because the pandemic has slowed everything down enough that it gets part-timeable. Right. Um, usually it's pretty much a full-time job. And what kind of other jobs did you do before getting into this? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, until they got started, I still did those heavily, but uh, I'm a programmer, so okay. uh, I, I've been programming for a long time now, and uh, it's, yeah, I, I love I love my job. I, I think programming is another form of creating things from the ground up. It's, I know most programmers wouldn't want to be called crafters, but it is a very similar field. Uh, you are basically taking a bunch of scraps of things and you're creating something usable and uh, that's what we do with ideas and you know poems that are all over the place we put them together in a book that somebody else can understand and how do you envision your brand growing uh, well i would love to see uh, more books 
um, in terms of the publishing company and a wider array of authors and different experiences. I have a few children's books and I would love to see that particularly expand. One of the uh, issues facing the children's publishing world right now is that I, I believe it's like 90% of authors are white and the illustrators are maybe like 70% white and uh, well that's you know fine and obviously in children's books there are many people like me who have been entirely formed by the children's books I've read. You know, I still cite them as my most favorite things. Um, I think it's also important to see other stories and other names and other cultures. And uh, I think that's just a matter of getting people who are familiar with those worlds to write them. So I would love to focus more on that. And um, I also think kids nowadays are prepared for and aware of different social justice issues that weren't really as prevalent when we were growing up. I mean, they were definitely there in the world, but they weren't prevalent in our classrooms and on our TVs and things. And now they are, and I would love to have something that reaches children who are interested in those things, so. Wonderful. All right, so getting a little away from the business, but we all are all about the local. What's your perfect day when you're out and about locally? Uh, well, you know, we're lucky to have perfect long beach, long beach weather, you know, 90% of the time, so one of those days. Um, but I, I love the MOLA. I, I could spend days there. Um, I know it's a small museum, but the garden is so peaceful and the, you know, even like the gift shop always has new things and <laughs> small little knickknacks. And they rotate the art significantly, but I, I find that every time I go, I, I see something I see something different. Um, I also love Retro Row, just going up and down there. Um, week to week, everything is different because because the nature of the businesses, you know, a lot of them are thrift or finding or craft or vintage shops and the variety of, of things you get to see are, are so diverse. So I love that. Excellent. Uh, any special food recommendations, places <laughs> you've been loving lately? Oh. Long Beach is also blessed with good food. There's yeah. pretty much no street you can go to that doesn't have something. I love The Socialist. I call it my living room because it's so close to where I live. <laughs> and uh, I, I eat there probably, you know, too much. But uh, yeah, I guess that would be my, my pick. So, do you work from home? Do you work from an office? A little bit of bowl? I work from home, but my home is built out um, because as a programmer, I did freelance too. Um, I have a section for work, you know, the work area. <laughs> so it's a little office within the house. So, I mean, my office is chaos, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> chaos or super neat and tidy? Super neat and tidy. Um, I try to keep things as organized as possible. The publishing team and the apparel team are different people. So just keeping that separate and organized makes it easier for everybody, I think. And uh, and also for me, because there's a lot of different projects going on. <laughs> so when you're working, do you need silence or do you listen to something? Do you have the TV on the background? What, what are you doing when you're working? <laughs> I, I work in total silence. I have a noise canceling headphones that I turn on like a serial killer with nothing playing, <laughs> just sit there in silence and do my work. But uh, I know that isn't the popular choice. Uh, everyone I know wants to have music going, but I just, I prefer if there's nothing going on in my head besides, you know, all the thoughts. Yeah, I totally understand. I go <laughs> back and forth personally. That makes sense. And then is there something you would like to eliminate from your daily schedule to just open up more space for working on your creative ventures? Uh, yeah, I mean, this year it's been um, health issues. <laughs> I right. would love to, you know, have less doctor appointments and all, all those types of things because they do take up a, a lot of time. and. Uh, the retail shops I work with and uh, other teams of people that I work with have all been really flexible about uh, my limitations, but I'm excited to enter a healthier phase of life where right. that, that isn't a part-time job in and of itself. Now for a little something philosophical. What holds more value for you? Creativity or knowledge or just myself thinking about when I've had the pleasure of hearing you do spoken word and poetry before experience or experiences. Oh, you know, it's, they're so tangled together because uh, 
creativity without knowledge is like, you know, an idea that doesn't get off, off the floor, you know, maybe like a, a hot air balloon or something that you can't mechanically make work. Knowledge is, is so critical to that. And experiences are how you, you know, what you gain from that and also what leads you into those creativities. Um, but I think if I had to put merit down on one or the other, I, I, would, I would put my money down on creativity winning the race if we were, you know, between all three. Right, and then do you feel like people need formal training or a mix? Not at all. Um, I went to a bunch of fancy schools, but it's not for what I ended up doing with my life with programming or anything else. And uh, I get that question a lot in the tech field and uh, I just learned it's something you can learn, I promise you guys. <laughs> and all these things are so available now. The knowledge is so right all over the internet. The quick search will give you some pretty good tips. And more than that, I think more and more people are coming to the idea of a community team concept. Like if someone has questions about apparel or publishing, you know, my email is, is public. They're welcome to reach out. I'm not in competition with my other publishers. We're just trying to represent independent books. That's wonderful to hear. All about community, which is something we're very proud of as well here. <laughs> um, and now just for the fun one. If you could move to any other place in this universe, or any other, or any time period, where would you go and why? I love the idea of space, and so I, I sort of lean towards that, but I think if I'm being really honest um, in terms of personality type, it would probably be Sesame Street. <laughs> 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 um, I, like, I like cities, I like kind of the chaos of things like that. Um, and as much as I love the idea of space, I would probably be very sad to look outside and not see anything. <laughs> I lived on a farm once and I'm good. You know, I want to see, I want to see all the wild things that happen in a city, but also Sesame Street kind of tones it down, you know, so it's like happy, fluffy city. <laughs> yeah. It's the best of both worlds. <laughs> so. All right. Who's your favorite Sesame Street character? Uh, Grover. Grover. Okay. Yeah. Totally. I get it. I've always been a fan of the cow. But, oh, that makes sense. He's, yeah. he's adorable too. Um, yeah, Grover's just so wonky, I think. <laughs> it's hard not to love. Mm -hmm. so. And he's got his fingers in almost everything. And sometimes he's super Grover. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Just so everyone knows, both Silver Star Labs Publishing and Silver Star Apparel are available here at Made by Millworks both in-store and online. We would like to thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, with a special thank you to the DOBA for giving us this forum and Michelle Molina, our owner, for everything she does for our store, our organization, our staff, and our makers, and our community for that matter. This year, we've learned how critical it is to shop local. When you shop at Made, you are supporting over a hundred local vendors like Rock. Like me. Every dollar you spend stays right here in our community. So please join us on Small Business Saturday, November 28th, to enjoy a new art show by Luis Sanchez and support your neighbors. Throughout this holiday season, Made is continuing to offer multiple ways for you to shop. You can shop in store where masks and social distancing are enforced combined with regular sanitation, or you can shop online with free local delivery free curbside pickup, and affordable shipping options. Finally, our sister bar, Eleanor, does have its great selection of hyper-local and woman-owned beer, wine, and ciders available to go. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, for all of your updates. Thank you for supporting your community, your friends, and your neighbors.